the musicians, the monkeys, and the crowds. The main square of Marrakesh is swarming with tourists and entertainers. But just a 15-minute drive outside the city, I discover another world. Dozens of hotels and villas, many of them empty. You can just see barely on the right a lot of the hotels that haven't been finished because, because of the crisis, there are less customers, and so they've postponed finishing them so they lose less money. Locals insist the projects just got delayed. This hotel stood half-built for two years, but now workers are back to finish it off. So to understand what really happened, I caught up with the Moroccan tourism minister. He spent 10 years working as a trader in the city before taking the job. <laughs> Minister, have we felt the impact of the crisis on tourism in Morocco? Yes, uh, impact, but little one. Um, Morocco had um, um, an annual average progression over the past 10 years, exceeding the 10, 12 percent every year. How concerned are you that actually the crisis is not over and that the problems are, are just getting delayed? No, actually, we, we're quite positive about that. So we see the uh, spending coming back. More people are visiting the country and we moving from 6% growth last year to exceed 14% this year. So we feeling comfortable, working hard to, make, to keep the momentum and keep the growth going up. Tourism represents 10% of Morocco's GDP. In the past decade, the country planned to triple its hotel capacity. But with the crisis, projects stalled, and they only managed to double the number of beds. We also went to the five-star hotel Eden Andalou, that opened two months before Lehman Brothers collapsed. They were betting on a luxury clientele, but as stocks dwindled, so did the tourists. They were only 40% for last year and hoped to reach 60% this year. The first month I opened, in August, I remember I sold very expensive rooms. But then we had the crisis and some other factors. And Marrakesh, which is the Mercedes of destinations, started getting sold at a lower price, with more pressure from the consumer. Mr. Shawi also told me the crisis got rid of speculators, developers who were trying to make a quick buck during the boom years. A fate Samana wants to avoid. This huge complex of villas, golf and hotels that cost 300 million euros to build suffered from delays, but its developer now expects more than 15% return on investment. When everybody is doing at the same time, 10 five-star at the same moment on the same location, you have the problem. I think that Morocco is not suffering of overdevelopment, it's suffering of the rhythm of development. But I am very confident in the global economy and particularly the global economy of tourism. The sun is now setting in Marrakesh. It's time for the last prayer of the day. Food stalls have quickly replaced the snakes and the monkeys. But there are still plenty of tourists on the main square. The challenge for Morocco and its government is now to attract more tourists without becoming mass market, keeping the identity, the smells and the colors of Morocco alive. Frozen Lacroix, Jamal Fna, Marrakesh.